Last week, we looked at some of the basic gear a hunter needs for rabbit hunting. Boots, jackets, brush pants, and chaps. We showed you the basic types of guns that rabbit hunters use, but we didn't try any or compare their performance. That's what we're going to do right now. Now, the most popular type of gun for rabbit hunting is the shotgun. Now, a shotgun does not shoot bullets. A shotgun shoots a charge of lead pellets, little lead pellets called shot. Now, shotgun shot doesn't have a very long range, 30, 40 yards or so max for killing a rabbit. Now, if you shoot this shot up into the air, it might go four or 500 feet maximum, but that's about it. These pellets quickly lose their velocity and drop to the ground. Now, when you buy a shotgun, they come in several gauges. The difference is in the diameter of the shells, which translates into the amount of shot that each shell can carry. 12 gauge carries the most, the 20 gauge and the 410. These are the three basic rabbit type of gauges that are used uh, for hunting rabbits in this country. Now you can get the 410 in a three inch length, which has 11 16 ounce of shot in it. But the smaller size, the traditional size, is the two and three quarter inch. And look at this. It only has a half ounce of lead shot half ounce of lead pellets. Now that's why a lot of hunters like to go to the 20 gauge, a step up. 20 gauge holds 7 eighths of an ounce of shot, and when you compare it with the half ounce in the 410, it's quite a bit more. Now the largest shell on the market that is really used for rabbit hunting is 12 gauge. Uh, one and a quarter ounces you can buy in the heavy field loads. Most of them are loaded with one and an eighth ounce, but that's substantially more. You can see that is in the 410. Now the more shot that's in a shotgun shell, the more pellets you send out in your pattern, the better chance you have of hitting your target at close range, and the 12 gauge comes out on top in this. Now the reason the 410 is known as a kid's gun is because it kicks the least when it's fired. The reason for the light kick is the light shot load, the light weight of the shot that's being pushed down the barrel in a 410. Now recoil is caused by a principle of physics which says for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So when the shotgun shell explodes inside the chamber, it creates pressures in all directions. Now the steel of the chamber keeps the pressure you know, from blowing out the sides and this only leaves this hole down the barrel as an outlet. So what happens is this, in the case of a, a 410, half ounce of shot is traveling down the barrel and there's an equal and opposite reaction on the other side of the explosion that pushes the gun back. That's called recoil. Now the amount of recoil is in direct proportion to the size of the shotgun shell, how much shot it's pushing out the barrel. The larger the shot charge, the heavier that is, the more the gun pushes back. That's the principle of recoil. The theory sounds good, but how do you really see the difference in the recoil between these guns? If you shoot them, you're, you're snugging them into your shoulder and, and you feel the recoil, but let's see if I can't show you the recoil in a really graphic way. Here's a three inch 410 shell, 11 16 ounces of shot, and 11 16 of an ounce of shot is what is gonna cause the equal and opposite reaction. Now when I shoot this, I'm gonna do it one-handed. Now this is not the normal way to do it. I'm gripping it tightly on this end, but I think you'll, you'll see the gist here on the recoil. Not too bad. I can hold it with one hand and, and it only moved uh, oh, a couple inches. Now let's try the 20 gauge. Now we're stepping up more powder and 7 8 ounces of shot, 7 8 of an ounce I should say. This is also a lightweight single shot gun, a kid's gun, but I think you'll see that the recoil is greater. I don't know about this 12 gauge, John. This one hand shooting, <laughs> it's kind of rugged. Now we have here an ounce and a quarter of shot in this 12 gauge, and that's what's gonna cause an equal and opposite reaction that is gonna be about twice as much at least uh, than the 410. Once again, one handed smarts. That is the equal and opposite reaction principle. That's why the 410 is regarded as a kid's gun because of the recoil. The 12 gauge is regarded as dad's gun uh, because it's just a little tougher to shoot, tougher on the shoulder. But this is much tougher to hit rabbits with. In order to check the amount of shot and the size of the pattern that we're throwing at different distances, we'll set up pieces of cardboard at 15 and 33 yards, typical hunting and target distances. First, the 410, 
which has a full choke, which means the barrel squeezes down at the muzzle, keeping the shot together in a tighter group than if the barrel was oh, straight like a pipe. The pattern is quite small at 15 yards and only contains about 5 eighths ounce of shot. At 33 yards, the shot spreads out and it isn't very dense. Pretty tough for a kid to kill a rabbit with a 410 at this distance. Now let's try the 20 gauge, 7 8 ounce of shot with an open choke. That means it's straight like a pipe, no constriction at all. At 15 yards, the pattern is larger and has more shot, far better than the 410. At 33 yards, the pattern opens up so much that the load of number 6 shot is beginning to look iffy. So let's go to the 12 gauge double barrel. Now each barrel has a different choke. The right barrel is improved cylinder, which means a slight amount of constriction. The left barrel is modified, which means more constriction but not as much as a full choke. At 15 yards, the improved cylinder has a pretty tight pattern, smaller than the 20 gauge open choke, but the modified choke is even tighter, comparable to the 410 full choke. At 33 yards, the 12 gauge really shines through. The improved cylinder barrel has a wide pattern, but with one and an eighth ounce of shot, it's still dense enough. The modified barrel also has an excellent pattern with plenty of density over a large area. Now that we know the different patterns, let's go to our clays trailer and try each gun on moving clay targets. These are special rabbit clays with thick rims so they can bounce on the ground. Matt Radzilowski loads the traps and demonstrates how they're thrown. They bounce unpredictably, like, like rabbits, and you have to shoot fast. Now, the 20 gauge that had the biggest pattern at 15 yards was also my best gun for these rabbits. I took three shots and smucked each one. The pattern is wide, dense, and the lightweight gun is easy to swing. Now, with that wide pattern, my margin of error was, oh, a foot or so, and I'd still break the target. Now, the 12 gauge, on the other hand, had two chokes, both of them tighter than the 20 gauge. The improved cylinder choke will shoot first, then the tighter modified barrel, and I missed. Three times in a row, I hit the first rabbit, but missed the second, shooting just a little bit behind it. Now, the difference was in the pattern. I had more margin of error with improved cylinder, and I'd miss by a few inches with the modified. Now, does this give you any clue as to how I'll do with the 410 full choke, an only 11 sixteenths ounce of shot? Well, I miss shooting a few inches behind the target. That's where I apparently okay. always shoot with the 20 gauge. On the third shot, I compensated swinging the gun a few inches ahead of my normal swing, and that's where the center of the pattern actually was. Now let's review those pieces of cardboard that I shot at, but we'll put a light behind them so we can see the shot pattern. The 410 full choke had the smallest, tightest pattern at 15 yards, which was comparable to the 12 gauge modified choke, also very tight. Now I had trouble hitting the clays with both of those. The improved cylinder 12 gauge opened up wider, which helped me on the clays, but the best was the 20 gauge with no choke at all, open barrel. A nice, wide, even pattern with the largest margin of error for a shooter. Now, at 33 yards, that 410 full choke didn't have enough pellets to give a good pattern. The 20 gauge open choke, well, likewise, was a little sparse. But the 12 gauge was excellent on both the improved cylinder and modified barrels. Plenty of pellets, a good dense pattern that was nice and wide. So... The moral of the story is, unless you want the challenge of a lightweight, small 410, choose the largest gauge you can that is comfortable for you to carry and to shoot. Now, most women and kids won't have any trouble at all shooting a 20 gauge, has plenty of payload so it can hit the target. And if you have a choice of chokes, don't get the full choke. You want a wider choke, a wider pattern if you can get one at 15 or 20 yards. The key element for successful shotgun shooting is having a large, dense pattern that gives you little margin of error if you're shooting behind or ahead a few inches. Now, I recommend that you get some cardboard and go out and do a patterning test at different yardages with your shotgun using some different shells. You might be surprised at what's really coming out the end of your barrel. If nothing else, check out your shotgun patterns in the snow. 
When you know the real pattern, you'll know why your shotgun shooting is sometimes hit and miss.